Yes, you lovely people. If you're not already, make sure you give us a follow over on Spotify. What do you mean signings? Who, 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 am I signing for anybody? Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very, very random episode of the Fozcast. We are filming another episode this afternoon with um, a very prestigious sports broadcaster. She is at the top of her game at the minute, and we have got about an hour to kill in the meantime, don't we, Tom? We have, so we thought we'd have a little impromptu chat about... About anything. Um, Frank, the editor, we were just sitting there chilling. Frank, the editor, was like, why don't you just like talk about stuff, talk about football, talk about the Lionesses, talk about this, that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, all right, sweet, isn't it? Now, Tom, I've got to say, is out of his comfort zone here. Tom is the planner, yeah? He's the guy that's got OCD who will want to have planned it within an inch of its life. He's got talking points normally, and he's got none of that today. So this little pad thing that you've got, yeah, can go away. Oh, he's putting, he's making me put away my... Take take your iPad, my put it comfort, away. My comfort blanket. Your comfort blanket's gone because we're going to ramble today, all right? We're going to chat gump about absolutely anything. I've got a few little talking points I want to talk about in my head. Frank, the editor, who is on comms, you might hear him now and then jump in and say, talk about this. We're just going to talk about stuff. It will all be pretty much sport related, though, okay? We good to go? We are good to go, mate. So go where, on, where I, we- I, I want to start off talking about the England Lionesses last night. Okay. So just let me put a bit of context around this quickly, yeah? Um, England Lionesses played Norway last night. Second uh, group game, they absolutely battered them 8-0. What was it? 5-0 at half-time? 6-0 at half-time. 6-0 at half-time. It was billed as a top, kind of top-tier group game. Tough Going to be super tight. Yeah. And we've absolutely blown them out the water. Absolutely battered them. Uh, I've got to say, the girls were phenomenal. Like, they... The, the energy, though, they were relentless. They were pressing, they were charging, they were shutting down. Um, Norway did not even know what had hit them, did they? No. Um, you only watched the second half, so so you kind of joined it a bit late. But that first half, Tom, honestly, mate, we were we were watching it in, in, our, in our kitchen. Um, my son, my daughter, my wife, and we were honestly transfixed. I love the fact... You said to me something earlier, actually, which I, I thought, yeah, that's true, that. Because um, your sons watch it as well, don't yeah. they? Your boys who are, what, 30, 12, 12 and, and 8. 12 and 8. Mine are 12 and 13. And the, the talk earlier in the day was England are playing tonight. Yeah? That's what the talk was. It wasn't England women. It wasn't England ladies. It was England are playing tonight. Yeah, I, I think it's it's really important to highlight because we're of a generation, which we'll talk about in a minute on Twitter, where um, there can be some negativity, but it's so refreshing to see our kids, this next generation, where there's no prejudice, there's no caveats yeah. on the whole. And exactly right. My lads were saying, England are playing tonight. Yeah. And um, the other thing I saw the other day, one of our friends, John Crownshaw, put a picture on, he went to the first group game and he said, I've never seen so many children at a football match. A football match, yeah. And it's Old Trafford, by the way, full full, full, full capacity, full house, sold out, every single ticket had gone. Um, big shout out to uh, Lottie Woman Mo, by the way. She texted me like a couple of days before to yeah. say, Ben, do you want to come to the game? Bring Ryan her legs. Um, come and watch the game at, up at Old Trafford. We couldn't go there. We were at like um, an Amazon event, weren't we, down yeah. in London? Got it for her though as well because she's had to go in with COVID, hasn't she? Yeah, she has, yeah. Um, but but rest up, get well soon. Um, but no, thank you for that, Lottie. Um, yeah, the girls, they are... It's kind of... I'd like to think it's going to get to the point where it's kind of reminiscent of the Euros a couple of years back, getting to the final of the Euros. It was last year. Oh my God, a couple of years ago, last, last year. year. You know that good feeling about everything yeah. where everybody just buzzes for the next game and then everybody's sort of happy because the sun's shining and the sun is shining at the minute as yeah. well. We're currently, if you're not in the UK, right, and uh, currently we are experiencing some sort of a crazy, crazy heat wave and it's supposed to last for like the next three or four weeks as well. Um, so it's like 30 degrees every day pretty much everybody's out in the garden I've set up this ledge slip and slide haven't I in the garden yeah we had the kids on it the weekend we, we, we? Tom, Tom came up um, t- came around to the garden the boys the girls they were all playing on this slip and slide basically let about me about 25 metres long I'd say it's a, yeah at least 25, 25 metres, metres long. long yeah um, it's basically two massive blue tarpaulins right I've got these proper garden pegs to pin, pin it down um, and I've put them one sort of like overlapping the other one so it's one massive long bit what you need to do though is get yourself a load of washing up liquid well just quickly so uh, this is a first for me at the weekend I've been to a lot of barbecues over my over my time and it's the first time that I've ever texted someone and said 
what do you want me to bring? And they've said five massive bottles of um, washing up liquid. Fairy. That was a first. Yeah, fairy. Do you know because... what? I even bought fairy branded because I knew you'd go, why are you buying the cheap stuff for? Do you know why though? Because the cheap stuff stuff is thinner. Yeah, Gives you a rash. No, no, it's not about that. The cheap stuff is thinner. Viscosity. But, yeah, viscosity is thicker, fairy is, okay? So it lasts longer, yeah? You get more washes per bottle, all right? God, simple yeah. as that. It's as simple as that. So when the kids are all squidging it around on the slip and slide, on the tarpaulin, yeah? I know that one bottle will last them half this an hour. This isn't a sponsored ad, by the way. No, this isn't a sponsored ad, but big up to Fairy because it is the best for sure. So just, anyway... Can we go back to... The, oh, sorry, so you carry on, mate. I was just going to say, so anyway, yeah, we had this slip and slide, uh, completely tangent and off here, by the way. We had this slip and slide on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, on Sunday. Um, it was incredible. The weather was banging, got the barbecue on the go on the big green egg, cooked up an absolute storm as normal, didn't yeah, I? good. To be Shout fair. out to Marks and Spencers as well because um, went shopping earlier in the day and their, their meat range now, mate, is ridiculous. Is that yeah? where you got the Coke de Buff from? Yeah, the Coke de Buff. They sell these Coke de Buff. They're like 25 quid or something, but it is a big bad boy slab of meat, isn't it? Yeah. Proper on the bone, got a couple of them, cooked it up a storm in the cast iron skillet on the, uh, on the big green egg. Bits and bobs. It was just lovely weren't it it was and this is the new cooking show oh, yeah this can is we the... just rewind to the women because i've got a question for you yeah so, go on. obviously they've smashed it yeah uh, mido gets a hat trick brilliant um i'll be completely honest with you if i went back two to three years ago i wouldn't be ne- i'd never be negative about women's football yeah but i was just a bit like meh a bit like meh about it if i'm completely honest and what changed it for me um, is one standards getting better and better like every year? Yeah, it's getting ridiculous now, and also it's the fact that I've got two young nieces. Yeah, and they both play football, both really good footballers, like thirteen and ten, and I saw the impact that the the girls have. Yeah, on the young girls, and how important it is for the youngsters to have a role model now. You know, young young girls of eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's all very well having um, Declan Rice as a role model, but it, it, it is to a point. But for them to have a Lottie Wibber Moy, a Jordan a Gobbs, or Lucy yeah. Bronze, etc., it's really important. And that kind of I saw the passion from the, my nieces. And I guess the question for me is: You've got a daughter. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, for sure. Like, I think um, I think just sitting there last night. You know, we 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 make a big thing of taking our the technology off the kids anyway, so they can't just sort of sit there. They're on the phone and pretending they're watching it. And stuff. they're actually watching it and they want to watch it as well. Um, and I think that that was the beauty of it last night is watching um, kind of just the intensity England played at, right? And they were, I mean, they were proper on it. They were shutting down. They didn't give them a second's break, even when it was like seven nil um, with like twenty minutes to go or whatever. They're still shutting them down. They're still backing it up. They're getting behind them. They ain't giving them a breath. And I know for a fact my daughter's watching it thinking, wow, that's like, that's proper. Like, this is like, you know what I mean? This is what the men do as well. And the women are doing it and they're showing they can do it. And um, now that for me is what, you know, I need her to watch that to go, yeah, I could do this kind of Does thing. Does she relate to it now? Yeah, a bit more, a bit more for sure. Like my, my daughter plays netball um, and I think, she needs to see that there's a pathway for something. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. There is a pathway for something. So she sees the intensity with the, with which they do it. And she's like, wow, that's what it takes. That's what you've got to do to be able to get to the top of the game. Like last night, some of the girls, like Lucy Bronze, for example, right? Proper unsung hero, goes about her business. But her intensity last night, she is up behind, like the wing is incredible. Like, you could go through the whole team and say that. Um, shout out Clean Sheet for Mary Earps, by the way. Didn't have much to do, but still, Clean Sheet is a clean oh mate. And I am taking it all so what happens long. when you're playing in a game and you're gubbing someone like 7, 8 nil? Wait, what's the biggest victory you've ever had in your career? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a tough one, actually. Um, I don't think I've had many. I really don't. I, I don't think I've had many big ones. Um, but when, when it'll you, be a five or six or something. But when you're in a five or six, yeah. do you... Is it difficult to... So if you're four up... Do you? Sw- I know you're not going to switch off, but is it harder to stay focused? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's just easier. It's, it's human nature to just sort of take your foot off the gas. You know, when they say people say, "Oh, they're, they're going to they'll probably stay like this now because they'll just take the foot off the gas," and they do to an extent. And the other team is, is sort of almost on like damage limitation as well. Um, but no, they, they didn't do that last night. The girls, they did, they were relentless. You've honestly, s- you've said this about Man City before with Pep. Um, like I remember. Um, Again, this is insight that you, you pick things up watching games as fans. Obviously, of course you do. 
but like when you said to me last season is Man City their kind of game plan is that first 10 minutes yeah overwhelm they, you they go after you hard yeah. and completely overwhelm you do they take their foot off the gas if they go three or four up early, which yeah. often they do? Yeah, they do. They do. They um, Why? The amount of times that we've got into the second half and it's been 4-0, 5-0. Um, and they do. They just they just drop the intensity. They'll just keep the ball. They'll just keep the ball. They literally will just pass it around the back, pass it into midfield, back into defence. And um, it's because... I think it's a little bit of... Um, this is a good question, to be fair, because... Um, I think it's I think it's that sort of professional kind of courtesy, if you like, where really? where they don't want it to be nine ten nil. Yeah, really, they don't want it. We don't want it. It doesn't look great. Well, why? Because we've seen in the past couple of years how tight it is at the top, yeah. right? It is not beyond the realms that it goes to a goals for or goal difference. I can't quite remember how. Yeah, it's done for these sure. Days. I think thing is, Man City will always have the best goal difference. They will because they're they're better than anybody uh, doing that to teams and battering them six seven nil. They are. They're just better than everybody else. And I think whenever we've managed to play Man City, it's always been at a point where they are either far away on points or their goal difference is already far away superior to everybody else. Anyway, so you do. You, they'll get to a point where it's five four five or whatever six. And you can see that they're just not making those overlapping runs, or they're not making those probing drives. Um, they'll just they'll be happier to not take the risk with the ball and just keep it. And then it kind of just tires you out mentally more than anything because you know the game's done. You have just still got to keep doing it, but it's it's painful. It is honestly when you still got twenty minutes to go and it's five six nil or something. It's horrible. Yeah. What what do you say? So I remember last season towards the end of the season. Um, you were up at City, uh, Watford were up at City, lost 4-1. Yeah. And was it, th- I think it was 2 Maybe or 3. Maybe 5-1, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah Jesus was scored 4, didn't he? Yeah, Jesus scored 4. Yeah. Um, and I remember I remember kind of seeing the early goals and then you got one back and I was thinking, fucking hell, at least you've got a goal. Yeah. And then someone said to me, oh, final score was 5-1. Yeah. And, and my, genuinely, my as a, as a football fan, my instinct was, that's not bad. That sounds about right. That that's not bad. Yeah. Like, because I think fans would get on players' backs if yeah. you were to say that. But genuinely, like looking at it, I was like, okay, four four clear goals against Man City at the Etihad when they came flying out the blocks. You'll take that. Yeah, mate, uh, Man City did that to better teams than us last season. They did. They, they absolutely battered some teams last year. Like, if you look at towards, especially towards the end of the season, some of the results Man City were getting, it was five every week. They did it to us, and they did it to Newcastle, and they did it to somebody else. Last game of the season, Villa. Villa were 2 0 up, and within yeah. the space of about four minutes, they'd bought it back. They were free to up. But it, it, the thing is, when you're watching these games, it, I don't know if you're the same when you watch the games or if you play in the games or or whatever, but I was watching that game and there's no other team, I don't think, in world football that, like, when West Ham went to tune up yeah. at Villa, you go, this is... They sent over. Yeah, of like course. they're going to win this game for sure, or at least draw. I it. guarantee you, even the Villa players, right at two 0 one, they're thinking, "How on earth are we winning this game two 0 I guarantee you, they're thinking, "How on earth are we winning this game two 0 Right? But then I guarantee as well, in the back of every single one of them players' minds, are thinking, "This game is far from over. Like this is like far from over." And then they get the first goal, Man City, right? And then doubt will creep in like you wouldn't believe. And then they get the equaliser. And it's that feeling of inevitability. Honestly, I guarantee every Mad, one of them it? would have been thinking, here we go, here we go. Man City is, get ahead of steam and it's just inevitable. But this has been built up over a, a number of years and the United fans won't like to hear this, but it, it's cyclical, isn't it? So United had the heyday for, for so many years with Fergie and you look at it now and with what Man City are doing... It's eerily like Ferguson back in the pri- in in the heyday, isn't it? Where they would go one nil down or something, and it, or it could be United a one nil down in the eighty fifth minute, and you go, they're not losing this game. Yeah, for sure. That's Man City all over. You know that it's never ever done. You can't like you do, even to be fair, Liverpool aren't far from that either. Liverpool are not far from that, but I'd say Man City are the team that you can never ever ever rest on your laurels against because they have just got they've got everything. They've got absolutely everything. Yeah, okay. Here's, I've got a question for you. So we were coming down for the podcast today. We drove down to Junction, Watford Junction today. So we always have a bit of idle chit-chat and just throwing some ideas around the podcast and stuff. And we like to do this kind of Fozzie's quick fire 
rapid-fire questions with a guest, yeah. don't we? And one of my questions today, uh, I, I said, oh, that's a good question, if I don't mind saying to myself, was what is the best football match you've ever seen? So this is something we're going to be asking to guests. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, what is the best football match you've ever seen? Oh, mate, the, do you know what? I don't know if it is the best football match we've ever seen, but the one that springs to mind straight away for me, right, was um, Tottenham against Ajax a couple of seasons ago. Champions oh League, semi-final, Lucas Moura, last, last hat second. Trick, didn't, he? didn't he get a Yeah, trick? I think he might have scored a hat-trick. Last second goal to take them through. But I remember, the reason why it stands so clearly in my mind is me and my son were watching it, right? And it was, um, it was like... Beyond the realms of possibility, it wasn't going to happen. Tottenham weren't going to do it. Bear in mind, I was a Tottenham fan as a kid as well, so I've got a little bit of something in there probably. Um, but for, for it to happen the way it did, and then Lucas Moore goes through, stinks one in, and there, that's it, all of a sudden they're through. Seems. It was like goosebumps time. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. What was yours? You've got to have one, I've surely. Got two. Go on, then. Right, two. One of them I watched with you. Right at your dad's house, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, Champions League Liverpool, final. AC, AC Milan. Man. We watched you. You you reminded me the other day. We watched it in a pub in Leamington. Yeah, the first half, the first half. Yeah. Right, me, you, and Luke. Yeah. and we went out, and they were three 0 down at halftime. Yeah, and we went home, and we went to your house, and I'll never forget. And we were just had it on in the background. We were lying on the floor playing cards yeah. in your front room. And one went in and we were like, mm, okay, second one went in, yeah. cards went away, chips went away yeah. and we were in. And that was unbelievable. Like I'll never, ever forget still that. Still one. one of the best moments of that game was the Jer Jersey Dudex save that still people don't really talk about, but it's one of the most incredible unbelievable saves I've ever seen in the history yeah. of goalkeeping it's right up there in a in a Champions League final what makes it so good oh, it's, it's just the he makes the first save and it's almost like he doesn't know where the ball is Shevchenko's just got to tap it in and he just does some in, natural instinctive kind of move with his hand hits his hand goes over the crossbar and it's just one of those moments as a goalkeeper where but if you do make that save you just even you are thinking I don't know how I've done yeah, that. Yeah. I don't know how I've done that. And that's what it's like. I'm watching it going, that is ridiculous. In a Champions League final, outrageous. And that, and that Milan team weren't shit, were they? Oh, they were a prop. That was a proper team. That was Milan that was in their pomp. One of, yeah. one of one of the greater teams. Yeah, that was Milan in their pomp. And outrageous. then my second one, which is a live one, was Blues Arsenal Cup final. League oh, Cup final. Yeah, nice. Like, yeah. I remember because um you've done I think there's been three big finals that we've been to with you I say we as Ben's mate family friends etc and the first big one was Wrexham when you yep. got to the LDV fans yep. final that was brilliant against Southport um, yeah and Ben's always South been End. South End was it South End South End yeah and Ben's been always great over the years so like tickets you kind of bought up a load of tickets yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, coach on from Leamington and we had like 40 or 50 of us go then we had um Playoff final. Yeah, Leeds. That was Watford probably Leeds. Watford Leeds. 3 0. Yeah. Jay Demerit, Bullet Header. I love Darius that one. Henderson. James Darius Chambers. Hens James Chambers, yeah. yeah. And then there was the Blues one. And um, we were talking about it because we were chatting in Mallorca and we were like, what's your favourite song ever? And it's very emotionally led, isn't it? You yeah. said like, and it's obvious, but there's always a reason. There's always yeah, a meaning. Sure. And it's the same with a football game. And like when you when you followed a player or been friends with a player, or your brother, mum, dad, whatever, it, it's it's personal. And I remember going to that game and again, there was coach, load of us went down and you're going and you realistically, you're going, we're here for a day out. Yeah. Okay. And Blues fans won't mind me saying that, that probably not that many of them thought uh, we're going to gonna, we're gonna win Birmingham today. Birmingham was 16 to 1 yeah. to win in, no, in, in normal time. final, yeah. 16 to, to 1. To win in normal time. And I, I remember and it was, it was absolute chaos. Yeah. It was, what an unbelievable day out. Mate, that full-time whistle is still the, the the best moment in my whole football career when that full-time whistle went and me and Stevie Carr are sprinting down the pitch to run towards the Blues fans. Like, pure goosebump moment. If you could bottle that little feeling there and sell it, oh my god! But you said that even, like, you guys hadn't even put any planning into, like, if you won, what were you doing on a night out? We, we, we had to go Didn't back to... Anything. We had to go back to Birmingham and went into uh, the, the Arcadian and went to the indie bar like it's proper like <laughs> down and dirty sticky feet it was a good night I mean way. you must have got mobbed in there you there weren't nobody knew we were there so nobody like, to be fair they were pretty good they put us in a bat bit and it was sweet as a nut but um, yeah nobody like knew we were there and anyway. what year was this 2011 so socials were there but not quite oh, as no, prominent yeah people didn't have phones so much then um, can we can we talk about the big scar that I've got on my forehead at this moment in time it's a big one isn't it <laughs> 
It's a big one. I've got, so let me, I'll, again, I'll tell you, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. But um, so Thursday night, um, we've got some electric scooters that the, the kids go on because we live in the middle of a farm. So we've got a lot of ground. The kids can all mooch about and have a nice time and stuff. 30 acres, 40 acres. But it's not, it's not ours. We're Something just like renting it anyway. Um, so anyway, Saving up for a deposit I'm, on out, house. I'm out on Thursday night um, with Louis. We're just going around the fields and stuff like that. I've taken a corner a bit too fast. Um, the front wheel's gone and I have absolutely stacked it off this scooter. Um, but I've got not a scratch on my body apart from my head and my face my face has literally taken the brunt of everything i think i've i think i've fallen head first into like this mound of mud but it's got bricks sticking out stones all over the shop um so i've got this massive gash on my forehead on the corner um my face is just literally scrazed all down one side i've got the biggest scraze on my beard on my lip um i was in a bad way weren't i yeah you you came to hot so I, I I went straight to A and E. Um, Tom was good enough to come and meet me there and sort of stayed with me for what four well, four odd hours or something like Kate, that. Kate, your wife had um, COVID, yeah, so, so she so couldn't she go anywhere. Had to just sort of drop me and then leave me, sort of thing. Um, so Tom came to the hospital. Well, I spoke to with Kate. Me. I spoke to Kate just to put. I wouldn't have gone. Yeah, like if you'd you you know you're a big boy, you can wait in a changing in a uh, hospital waiting room. However, I spoke to Kate Ben's wife and and she was like, he's gone to hospital. He's quite quite cold and I was thinking mm, red flag because it's 25 degrees and he's the sweatiest bloke I've True ever that. met in my life she said he's a little bit I don't know whether he's taken the bang to his head if he's a bit concussed because he's a bit you know um, delirious or whatever he I made him a massive bottle of squash and he's left it in the car and I'm thinking, oof. And I don't think he's got any phone battery. Bear in mind, you're still still on a driving bad from speeding. Yeah. So all of those things coming out, I'm like watching a movie, feet, you know, trotters up. Ah, oh, you must have and been I'm like, like, for God's I'm sake. I'm like, oh, come on. I'll go and see the old co-host and make, hey, you, make was, sure he's there. When he walked in through them hospital doors and I saw him, it was like, if you could have played a sound to accompany it, it would have been that. <laughs> Came walking with a like a Tesco bag of water, like, water paracetamol, phone charger, all chocolate. sorts. I ate all the chocolate. Yeah, you did eat all the chocolate. I was <laughs> not hungry, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, that, so um, they've kind of patched me up, clean it all, um, sent me on my way. But um, yeah, I was in a bad way for a couple of days, like for two or three days, um, um, I must have had a bit of concussion or something because I was like a zombie, wasn't I? You were, but like uh, the ironic thing is, is the amount of times, like when we ride our bikes in Mallorca or wherever we go, um, when you go down the hills, obviously you're descending. Now I'm quite chill. I like to look at the um, scenery. Scenery. I am always squeezing the brakes and stuff. He's different. He just lets the brakes go. Yeah. And like, I remember when we went recently, I was going like 50 kilometers, a m like 50 k's an hour down yeah, a hill yeah, yeah. and you've gone off into the distance and I'm thinking he's cool, doing he's at doing least some. 65, 70 k's know, an hour. Yeah. It was windy and all sorts and you've never come off. Never You've come never off. come off no. and then you're on a scooter yeah. at home but you've, like you said, you've took the full brunt of it on your face, I, I, haven't you? I was in a bad way. Like, for, for the first two days, my face just swelled up. Um, like, I couldn't open my mouth. My, like, lips were killing. Like, do you know that? You, it's like those, you know when you play football and you got those, like, burns, slide burns, grass oh. burns down the side of your legs and stuff like that? That's what it was like for two days. So every time, like, I smiled or I spoke or anything, um, just sort of, like, raised your eyebrows or something, you'd feel, like, the skin cracking again. Oh, it was brutal, man. What, what's the strangest football injury you've ever had? Oh, you've had a few, I've actually. had a few. I had a really bad one. Wow, I actually got through it unbelievably. Um, a couple of years back in COVID, so it was the same sort of thing. We had the slip and slide out, right? And on these tarpaulins, yeah, they've got like the little metal uh, eyelets where you can pin it down with the pegs. Um, the thing is, right, if you're hammering a, um, like a peg through these eyelets, sometimes the eyelet sort of like sticks up a bit yeah. and it's sharp, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. sharp, these little they eyelets. Come away. A little yeah, bit, they yeah. come away. Um, and it's the first time I've done it, this was a couple of years ago, first time I've done it, so I didn't really think much of it. Anyway, I was on it with the kids. I was messing around, running, slipping and sliding all the way to the end. And then one day I ran, jumped onto my lilo to slide, and I just felt something go into my, my big toe, like really went into my big toe to the point where I'm thinking, oh, that didn't feel nice. That was like a slice, yeah? Got to the end of the slip and slide, looked down, 
my foot is red already straight away I'd been on the slip and side for about three seconds sliding to the end and it was red already I had a good old goose at it oh my god I had cut it so deep it was phenomenal blood was pouring out of it absolutely pouring out of it um, it was in the middle of COVID didn't want to go to hospital so I had to just literally clean the bad boy up like strap it as hard as I could to stop the bleeding um, but we had just started back at football as well we had just started back training so I had to go back in and try and explain to them exactly what Do I had done to my foot you have to just bullshit it I bullshitted it mate yeah I made out that um, I had dropped something dropped a glass basically outside I'd gone to step outside put my foot straight on this bit of glass and then I've fallen backwards um, and it's just sliced through my toe um, but that was brutal I've got some pictures actually I'll see if I if you're, if you're, if you're happy seeing some gruesome pictures I'll put them up on uh, on the YouTube channel now because it was not a nice injury. But when you've got to play football with something like that, mate, that is agony. Yeah, I agony. Can imagine. But disclaimer, though, if we're going to put a picture up of Ben's feet, he's got the mankiest no, feet. As a footballer's go, mate, my feet are not manky. Can't see you chewing off the loose skin. Yeah, but, that's, but why. that's why they're not manky, mate. You should see some of the footballers' feet out there. They get their toes stood on. You've got to imagine, their toes are getting stood on all the time yeah. literally weekly yeah their toes are black and blue the nails are dead they are horrible mate they've got athletes feet foot all like oh it's disgusting here's mate. a question for you so this is a bit of a technical football one then like in terms of like your setup we get um, like on the DMs and stuff you, you'll you get asked a lot about um, why people cut holes in their socks, socks. Yeah. and then these grippy socks because yeah. I didn't realise until recently, like it's been a long time since I played football, but there's like a real new thing with strapping, cutting yeah, holes. Yeah. Talk to me about your setup for from putting on your socks and your boots on a match day. What do you do? Well, mine's like as basic as you get. Literally, the, like anybody else's, I put my shin pads on, I put some under wrap to keep them in place. Then I put my socks on. Um, what do you mean under wrap? So like tape just to keep yeah, the... Yeah, it's, it's not tape. It's like, a, it's like a foamy thing that just keeps it in place really, but it doesn't stick to anything. It just keeps it in there with pure sort of like pressure and you just keep wrapping it around. Um, I'll put a pair of white socks on and then I'll... I'll pull my socks up over the top of it. So the white socks underneath your football socks? Uh, yeah, underneath my football socks. Oh, everybody cuts the cuts it from the ankle down now. Everybody. Cuts what? Cuts their playing socks, their match socks. So those under socks that you wear, those yeah. white socks, do they have grippy bits on some the bottom? Some people do. Yeah, some people wear these grippy. These are like a big new thing now because when you're playing football, you've got to think the intensity these players play at nowadays, their feet get sweaty, they move about in the boot and you do, you can slip about a bit to be fair. Just You might go to kick a ball, your foot slides a little bit and you don't quite get it where you want to go. So they They've, they've brought out these like grip socks basically where they've got a load of little rubber dots all along the sole of the socks yeah. and when you've got them into your boot they do they do, do a very good job to be fair they stay where they are um, and then what you do is you'll pull your match sock up over the white sock it looks pretty cool but a lot of people now what they've started to do is is cut holes in the back of their their match socks Yeah, I saw this last night this is it's kind of a it's kind of a new thing to sort of like alleviate pressure in certain places yeah, and like I saw it last night like they cut like a little hole little in the back holes. of the calf yeah and they were saying it, it, it it lets blood um, yeah, flow more it. free. That's the one. And then there's an argument that stops cramping. Yeah. So, with, so just go back to the ankle thing. So you will cut the bottom of your match day sock off. Yes, you do, yeah. You cut the bottom of it off. What, what's that for? Um, it's, it's just, a, again, a bit more comfier because the white sock is the bit that's in contact with the boot and then the the match sock is, obviously, you only just need it because so, you, you've got to wear that kit kind of thing. Um, but you're used to playing in white socks. You're training every single day wearing the same white socks. So when you come to a match, you want to know you've got the same equipment on your feet. That's why people will always just wear white socks and then they'll cut the bottom of their match sock off it looks, you can't really tell much stuff. Some, some tape it, some don't tape it. Um, you'll always tape it at the top of your socks, um, just above the shin pad. Um, but that's it. But like I say, if you're going to be cutting the, the holes in the socks, so like some of these players do, you better be a player to pull it off. I, I, apparently only the fancy Dans, the ones that think they've got a bit, are able to do that and get away with so, it. So when you're, so if, if everyone's cutting their socks, why aren't the manufacturers making them? With already holes in them? Yeah. Mate, you might have just done something there. <laughs> You might have just done something there. I'm sure I haven't. Nike, Adidas, Puma, Calme, take note, all right? I think you need to start making some match socks with pre-cut holes in them already. Good shout, that. There you go. Or just or just like doing a half and half sock with holes in the back connected to a white sock with grippy bits on the bottom of it. That's something. That is a product. Good to go. There you go. We've got a business here. There you go. Good to go. Um, hey guys, yeah. Update for signings. What's happening? All right, Frankie Boy's just come in with a big shout. What do you mean signings? Who, uh, who, am I signing for anybody? 
Yeah, what's, what's the news? Right, Frankie. Oh. Right, so it is the 12th of July. Yep. A lot of teams went back uh, beginning of July. Yeah. Some were the week, like last week in June. Yeah. So on the 12th of July, what is your transfer club status, Mr. Foster? Oh, my current status. I like it. Um, I've got to say, this is the latest I have ever, ever, ever not been playing football. So not like I say, normally we're back by now. We're I, I'm, I'm two weeks deep into pre-season training already by now. Um, but at this moment in time, I'm actually having a really nice time. I won't lie to you. Yeah, I'm keeping myself fit. I'm keeping myself good to go. I went and did a bit of training uh, last week with um, with Boaz Myhill at West Brom, catching a few balls, this and that, uh, which was fantastic, to be honest with you. I really, really enjoyed it. Just training with the young kids. Um, again, it was literally just to get my, my sort of bearings back a bit, really. You know, like I say, catch a few balls, get your footwork moving. Um, I, I'd say not only just for that, I'd say also just to get it in my head that I actually do still want to keep playing football. Do you know what I mean? If I'd have, if I'd have come away after a few days of training with, with Boaz and the young kids and kind of been like, mm, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, then at least I know in my head and yeah. I've got a clear picture. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. I did absolutely buzz off it. Um, so I think I will start to look for possible clubs in the in the, in yeah. the coming weeks. we've had a few options, haven't we? There's been a couple of Prem bits of interest, yeah. uh, a couple of bits in the Championship. Yeah, yeah. We had something come in from America, yeah. uh, which wasn't quite right, mainly because they're mid-season yeah. and they have salary budgets, etc., etc. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. wasn't quite the right option. But I think I think something like America would have to be next season, I'd say. Yeah. Um, I think for now, probably um, we're going we're gonna to stay home and probably hopefully try and find somewhere a little bit more local to where I'm living. Um, you know, I've been at Watford for four years where I've, I'm traveling every day and it's a hundred miles. It's an hour and a half in the car in the morning, then you're training and then it's an hour and a half in the car, a hundred miles home again. Um, and it just takes its toll on you. It really, really does. You're away a lot. You're in hotels, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, if I could find somewhere a little bit more local, that would be absolutely incredible. Um, but, but like I say, the transfer window doesn't close until the end of August. So is I it know, the end of August? Yeah, the end of August. So I know okay. I've still got at least sort of seven weeks left. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? A few um, holidays in there, mate. Exactly, mate. It's a few holidays still to be so, had. So tell me about your like training then so obviously you know we speak every day and I know you're keeping yourself tip top yeah. what are you doing exactly to stay yeah. fit so um, the one thing obviously I do my cycling everybody knows I do my cycling and that's how I keep the weight off and keep myself trim and the body moving all that kind of stuff but what I have started doing a lot lately is running and which is something I've never really done but I wanted to do a bit of running because every pre-season I always go back for training and the first few days I will end up getting tight calves and then it, honestly tight calves are horrible you get out of bed in the morning you're just kind of like oh my god and then it takes about two weeks for them to settle down so I thought sod it I'm going to do some running make sure all that stuff is out of the way so if I do sign for a club I need to be good to go so I've been doing sort of like 5k's and then I've been stepping up to do, be doing 10k's um, and I'm actually really enjoying the running to be fair it's, it's like I say I live in the middle of a farm in like pure country so I'm running through fields and all sorts and it's wicked um, but then also at home I've been doing a lot of like footwork drills um, so I've been getting in the garden with my son Louis I've got ladders I've got cones all that kind of stuff um, and it's just basically repeating the stuff that we would doing a goalkeeping session you know what I mean in and out of cones in and out of ladders touch this touch that um, I haven't actually done any goalkeeping with Louis yet but that's on the cards as well um, saying that though because it's been so dry and so hot don't fancy diving on my yeah, uh, I might have to do it on the slipping side I might get him chucking at me a few God. balls on the slipping side so at least then I've got something to glide off at yeah, least yeah imagine booting the ball on that it'd zip off there yeah, wouldn't it does it? zip off so, there so yeah. what's the difference then so um, let's look at like a Premier League player because obviously we talked about it on a recent podcast that it's different these days right yeah. you said that you might get one or two players that'll have a kilo or two yeah. you know but that's it you're talking for oh, yeah, you're minimal. talking four or five pounds in yeah, it, which yeah. is a week for them I'd yeah. like to get that off or whatever but let's say you're James Madison you're Declan Rice um, you're, you're N'Golo Kante or whatever how what are you doing in pre-season because I think from looking at social media which is another point it seems like more and more players at the elite level are taking the off-season as an opportunity to fine tune and they're getting put kind of private sessions going to see specialists doing mad drills strength and conditioning yeah. um if you were an outfield player, what what are you working on in the off season? Yeah, that's it. Now I think the level is is so high nowadays, and everybody's such an athlete, such a specimen that you can't afford to be left behind now. So whereas back in the day, it would be kind of turned back, 
to pre-season training, you might be, you might not have really done much work and you're a bit heavier. You can't do that now. So I think what they're doing is the lads, these, this new breed, they'll give themselves a week. They'll get like maximum of a week of holiday where it's like shut down time, mentally, physically, just rest, recuperate, have a nice time. Don't even think about going in the gym. But then once that week is out of the way, it is work time. So I had one in Mykonos and to be fair, it's a really good place to go and work out. It's called, I think it's called Mykonos Performance. But um, I was there for like four or five days and I thought, right, I'll, I'll basically, I'll rung them up. I said, is it right if I come for four or five days? They've got a Watt bike. I can do use all the gym and all that kind of stuff um and they were like yeah cool not a problem um so but he said basically this is what it is for a week's pass like it was expensive i think for a week it was like you're talking about a grand or something maybe a bit more maybe a bit more um i was like yeah cool so he basically allotted a load of time slots to me every day i'd have this time slot and he was like right that's cool that's your time slot now you know when you can turn up and you've got the use of everything brilliant awesome i went the first day got on the watt bike did an hour it was roasting hot i would got off the bike and i was like i think that's me done for the day yeah absolutely blowing kind of thing um but then later on that day i actually got felt a bit unwell like really quite unwell to the point where it didn't ruin the holiday but I definitely didn't feel like working out for the rest of the week so I had to give him a call and I was like listen mate I ain't going to be coming I'm really really sorry and he was like well mate you've still kind of got to pay for the week because you know we're booked out the time slots and now nobody else can get into it because I've had to turn I was like well how much is it going to cost and he was like it's about a grand, like you so know. I'm, you I'm thinking a oh, thousand God's euros sake. to go on a what uh, bike once? An hour, an hour on the what bike. Um, lovely scenery. Could though, have nearly mate. bought a what bike. Yeah, I know you're not wrong. Yeah, it was a lovely, lovely bit of scenery for an hour though. Um, but yeah, they've got these places everywhere now. Like you go to Portugal, they've got like centres, football centres, and there'll be specialist elite coaches, all that kind of stuff. A lot of a lot of these lads nowadays will have their own guys as well. They'll, they'll, they'll take them with. They'll take them with. They'll fly them out. All that kind of stuff. Jamie Velocity, who's got um, an incredible gym in Birmingham yeah, by yeah. the way he knows a lot of the lads really really well and he does he will happily go out there and work with them and that's, that's top class coach. it's a bit social as well though because isn't it, obviously at a football club um, physios um, strength and conditioning coaches yeah, yeah, yeah. masseuses and so on and so forth often become really good mates with the lads as yeah. we've discussed but they'll go away with and well, it's do a, a bit, thing as do well, a bit yeah. of work on the side it's a they? trust thing as well because if you're if you're away with a family and you're bringing somebody with you you need to know that the family likes them the wife likes and the kids gets on with them all that kind of stuff um, so yeah like I say somebody like Jamie Velocity is just brilliant for that because one he's he's an absolute top coach he knows his stuff but he's a brilliant guy as well um, so I've seen on his Instagram he's been been away with Jack Grealish he's doing work in the gym with Troy Deeney all these lads um, but fair play to him you know the lads they like I say they don't now allow themselves to get to a place where they've got to like cram it in yeah. they, they know they'll give themselves a week and then they are back on it they are back on the ball yeah well with Jamie's going away with Jack Grealish I'm sure they had a little cheeky egg bomb along the well, way Jackie boy, Jackie boy likes one doesn't he work hard play hard Absolutely, mate. I'm a mate. massive massive advocate of it work hard play hard and I think Jack Grealish has got it down to a teammate yeah. let your hair down for a week or so have a nice time chill out and then boom do the hard work yeah. you saw the pictures of Jack Grealish by the way he is an animal you see his body he looked like an absolute tank trim no body fat yeah. on him whatsoever but he's a natural footballer something like don't get me wrong fitness and that it comes natural to a guy like him but he's a baller he's a footballer yeah, Give him a ball and he'll just do something with it. That's what you want from There's people not, like I him. I think he's not like a dying kind of specimen, like dying kind of species. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You don't see that many people carry the dribble. Yeah. Phil Foden maybe a Phil little bit. Phil Foden, yeah. like Raheem Sterling, yeah, but there's not, yeah. there, what, you know, go back 15, 20 years yeah. and you'd have wingers that would dribble. Yeah. They'd get to the byline and they'd oh, cross. Yeah. And it is, it's not as prevalent in today's nah, game. Jack Grealish carries the, the ball. Yeah, the big boys don't the big boys don't work on getting crop balls into the box. Yeah. They work on getting into the box and then cutting yeah. it back. That's what they work on nowadays. And um they've I mean, Man City have got players like that to burn. And now obviously with the signing of Erling Ireland to just put in the back of the net with his head, with his shoulder, with his knee. Anything you want, that guy is going to do it. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting season. This one for sure. But yeah, there you go. That was it was a it was a random episode. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Yeah, this might not. Did you make... enjoy that? I did it. We might not. Might not air. It is airing. We'll stick this one out. We'll we put a... it in the middle of the week yeah, or something. Air, right? We're definitely we had airing a nice it, all right? little chit chat, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, little little random episode. Anyway, we're about to do a podcast with Laura Woods, the legend that is Laura Woods. In the meantime, up the Fozcast. Up the chuffing Fozcast. Come on, the boys. Right, Lego. Lego. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We hope you enjoyed the latest episode of the Fozcast. Don't forget to give us a follow on Spotify. 
of the Foscast. <laughs>